So the game I'm playing today is called Game Ground for the Sega Genesis. This is another Genesis title that wasn't originally a Genesis title. It was indeed an arcade game developed by Sega and released in 1988. Like many of Sega's arcade games from the 80s, however, it did eventually receive a Genesis port. This particular port of the game was released in 1991. I'm not exactly sure who handled the Genesis port of the game, though. It might have been Sega themselves, but I've seen some other sources say that the Genesis port was developed by Sims, which is a development studio that was co-founded by Sega, but I've seen other people say that it was actually developed by one of Sega's in-house studios. I don't really know for sure, but what I do know is that the North American release of the Genesis version was not published by Sega, rather it was published by a company called Renovation Products, which is a North American company that was later bought out by Sega, because I'm pretty sure it was still independent at the time of this game's release. However, they are now defunct, they're no longer in business. So let's talk about Game Ground itself now. So, I don't really know how exactly to describe this game. Game Ground features a combination of so many different gameplay styles that it's pretty difficult to apply just one label to it. But the best way that I can describe this game is that it's kind of like Gauntlet. You know how in Gauntlet, if you've ever played the game before, you're traversing various dungeons and you have four different characters at your disposal, each with their own unique weapons and abilities, and you have to clear out massive rooms of enemies, even though killing all the enemies is not exactly required because most of the game involves just you trying to find the exit of the level so you can move on. You know, it's, it's kind of like a top-down dungeon crawler, basically. Well, Game Ground is kind of similar to that, except it doesn't take place in dungeons. It takes place mostly across wide open battlefields, even though there are some sections of the game in which you're traversing through buildings. But unlike Gauntlet, Game Ground also has a fair amount of strategy and puzzle game elements. Plus, you have way more characters that you can command, unlike in Gauntlet, in which you only get four characters to choose from, in Game Ground, you have 20 of them, and it's also vastly more difficult than Gauntlet as well. This game is very hard. I used to play this game a lot on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection for the PlayStation 3, which is also one of the reasons why I wanted to do a video on this game. And yeah, this game can be pretty ruthless at times. But what was weird about this game in particular, though, is that I probably played this game more often than any of the other games that were available on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. Back when I still used to play that compilation, Game Ground was one of the very few games that I constantly kept returning to, and in retrospect, I really don't know what it was about this game that kept me wanting to come back for more. Because for one thing, I wasn't very good at it, I don't remember ever managing to beat the first world, and not only that, but I also don't remember ever managing to rescue all 20 of the characters in the game. And overall, I was just incredibly horrible at it, but I don't know, it, it didn't stop me from trying to persevere, even though most of my attempts at uh, persevering ended up failing miserably. Because <laughs> like I said, the game's not easy, regardless of what difficulty you're playing it on. But when I really stopped to think about it, I think one of the reasons why I came back to this game over and over again was because it's kind of unique. Game Ground was not only a pretty unique game for its time, but it's still kind of unique even today. I know I just explained that most of Game Ground's gameplay is derived from old-school, top-down action games like Gauntlet. In fact, I think the people who worked on Game Ground even admitted that the game took a lot of inspiration from Gauntlet. But the addition of puzzle and strategy elements really makes it stand out from a lot of top-down action games from the time. Instead of just blind blindly marching into rooms guns blazing and just mowing down everything in your path, Gain Ground encourages you to just take a step back and think about your next move. You know, this is not a game that you can rush through. I mean, you can definitely try, but you probably won't succeed just given how hard the game tends to be. But it's a lot smarter to plan your next move accordingly in this game. And that also involves trying to pick the best character for the job at hand, especially when you have 20 different characters at your disposal. So we're gonna get started with this now. We are going to go to just a uh, one player mode, but there is a co-op option, you know, if you have another friend with you. 
I don't remember if the arcade version had a co-op option, but it might have. I'm not really too familiar with the arcade version. Yeah, and another thing is that if you're also wondering why I'm playing the Genesis port, it's the version I'm the most familiar with. That's the only reason I'm even playing this. Otherwise, I would have just gone with the arcade version. This game was also ported to some other platforms like the Master System and PC Engine, but we're not gonna get too much into detail about that. So we're gonna get started here. Also, the music in this game is pretty great too. I mean, it is admittedly a bit more minimalistic compared to other games on the Genesis, but I still like it. The game's soundtrack definitely has some certified bangers on it, or at least the first world does. Right, so this is the first stage of the first round. We have some enemies with crossbows that we need to kill here. So when you start the game, assuming you're playing on normal mode, you can only select from three different warriors. You have Athra, who is basically a spear thrower. Then you have Betty, who has a gun, or like a pistol in one hand, and what I believe is a grenade that explodes upon contact in the other hand. And then finally, you have Johnny, who basically wields a machine gun. Now, you'll notice that it also shows you the types of weapons that they can use. That's indicated by those two little icons right below their portraits. You'll also notice, though, that there's an icon right here that has a letter around it, like L and H and some arrows. So that basically shows you the range of their special weapons. So, for instance, Johnny right here has an L next to his portrait, so that means means his weapon can only fire low to the ground, because some enemies will be up on higher platforms. The only problem with that is that certain weapons cannot reach them, though, so you'll need to use, like, different characters in order to be able to even kill them. So alternatively, you could use either Athra or Betty, who have an H around them, or like an H next to their weapon icon, which means they can fire their special weapon very high up. The arrows also indicate which directions they can fire in. Athra can fire in all eight directions, and Betty and Johnny can only fire, like, directly upwards. So that being said, we're gonna spawn Johnny onto here. Yeah, see, what, what I also like about this is that the level doesn't really begin until you choose which character that you want to throw onto the battlefield. So... I, I really like that. So it actually gives you time to, like, plan out your moves accordingly, basically. It gives you a lot of time to look at the battlefield and just, you know, plan out your moves and plan out what exactly you want to do here. So, I picked up this guy right here, actually. This is one of the characters that we can rescue. So you'll notice that there's also an exit at the very top of the screen. So the way that all of Game Grounds levels work is that you can normally defeat levels, or you can beat levels, I should say, by killing all the enemies on the screen. But, alternatively, you can just walk towards the exit of the level, and if you manage to get all the characters you currently have in your party through the exit, you still beat the stage anyway. So, you can kind of take a pacifist route through the game, but like I said, because the game is unforgiving most of the time, it's pretty much impossible to do so, but you can certainly try. So, this other guy that we picked up right here, so this guy is called the Glow Knight. So, he is a magic user. He can summon glowing balls around him, which I believe act as a shield, although I've never really seen any particular use for this guy. But he does have magic, so he fires directly in front of him with whatever kind of, like, sword that he's using, or some sort of cane. It actually looks like a cross, I just noticed. But yeah, he basically holds it directly in front of his face, so he shoots directly in front of him. He can fire in all eight directions, although it doesn't really tell you that from the, uh, from, from his portrait, because it says, like, like, you'll see that it has a little M around it. I also don't exactly know what the M means. I don't know if the M is, like, to indicate that he is a magic user, or if he's, like, his, his weapons are, like, mid-range. I actually don't know for sure. We also rescued another guy there by bringing him to the exit. That's another warrior that we now have at our disposal here. Let's just see if I can fire over these rocks. Okay, apparently I can't, so I'll just do this instead. Okay, that didn't work either. Hang on a second. Go... Damn it. Okay, you know what? You just get out of here. I think I'll actually use Johnny for this. Because for some reason, I cannot hit this guy. Johnny doesn't actually have any special weapons, by the way. He only has his, uh, his, his machine gun. But there you go. Killed him anyway. You also get a bonus total for beating the round very quickly. Keep in mind, too, that you are on a time limit. And the time limit of each individual level is only 200 seconds. And it starts counting down immediately as soon as the level begins. So that's why you have to, like, really plan out all your moves as fast as you possibly can, because it gives you, like, no time at all. So at least I was able to demonstrate the Glow Knight. There are some other magic users that we can demonstrate later on, but for now, let's demonstrate this guy out. So this guy is called Verbal. 
So he, uh, yeah, I don't know why he's called that either. That makes, like, no sense. I mean, thankfully, though, you can still pause the game, but I don't know, maybe it does kind of give you time, actually. If you were playing the arcade version, you wouldn't have been able to pause at any time, so it would have been even more difficult. But yeah, much like Athra, Verbal can also fire arrows at enemies. I believe his arrows have a much longer range than Athra's, though. So, for instance, like, you see this little ledge right here? Because he has, like, high range, yeah. As you can see, I can actually fire the arrows over that little cliff. So what we can do is that we can just go and take out these guys right over here. Yeah, then we can, like, fire upwards. It's, it's kind of weird, though, because these guys don't seem to, like, attack us directly. It's like they don't even notice we're here. Yeah, what's also kind of a pain is that sometimes the arrows just miss them altogether because they fly right over their heads. That's kind of annoying when that happens. So this level right here has a bit of a troll, because it says there's still two enemies remaining. We start walking towards the exit. Yeah, there's two other guys that suddenly come towards us, that start charging towards us. I think I am actually gonna try to take the guy on the right out, just so we can end the, end the level immediately. Jeez, I'm already starting to, like, not be able to say words correctly. There we go. There we go. Very nice indeed. Because, and admittedly, trying to walk all of your characters to the exit is a very tedious task. Because that's the thing. You need to walk every character in your party to the exit. It's not just a matter of, of getting one of them to the exit, which will allow you to advance to the next level, but you have to get all of them to the exit, though. You know, if you want to play the next stage with the characters that you still have in your party. So it's a lot better to just kill everything on the screen, which is exactly what we're gonna do here, if I can actually freaking aim. Holy crap. Okay, there we go. Very nice indeed. So yeah, Verbal's very good for taking out these guys, because most of these guys go down in one hit. We will encounter enemies later on in the second world that take more than one hit to kill. Yeah, there we are. There we go. Also gotta try and avoid these guys' arrows. As you can see, some of these guys will actually only attack us when we get close to them. So, even though I'm not entirely sure what this type of game would be called, apparently when this game first came out in arcades, Sega referred to it as an algorithm action game, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. But this entire game basically involves inspecting all of the enemies and just trying to trying to learn their attack patterns. Because some of these enemies have very specific attack patterns, while others are a little bit more random in nature. But you can very quickly learn all of their patterns and, you know, use that to your advantage, so you can very easily kill all of them. These are actually one, one new type of enemy right here. Yeah, I don't even know what they're throwing at us, but they're kind of like throwing... I'm not even sure, like nunchucks at us? Oh god! Okay, hang on a second, I'm kind of getting back into a corner here. I have to take these guys out. Because these guys throw a lot of a lot of those projectiles at us, like, in a very short time span. There we go. Yes, and here's another uh, warrior that we can pick up as well and take to the exit. I'm just gonna kill these other guys over here in the meantime. Because in, in order to rescue this guy right here, or this, this person, I have to take them to the exit of the level. If I kill an enemy before I take them to the exit, it's not gonna count. I won't be able to use that, uh, that warrior whatsoever. So gotta take them to the exit first, and then clear out the rest of the level, and then we can move on with our new character in hand. So this level, we actually have two different characters that we can rescue here. So this character right here, I believe her name is Valkyrie. She has a boomerang. Uh, she can actually throw two at a time, if I'm not mistaken. So, well, it's a boomerang. Yeah, it comes back around to her. None of the characters in this game get damaged by their own projectiles, just so you know. Yeah, and this is also not a matter of, like, like, uh, yeah, characters getting hit by projectiles from other enemies. No, this game does not work like that. She can also just use a normal, uh, shotgun as well. Yeah, see, the only problem with this right here, though, is that it doesn't reach all the way, the boomerang. That's not gonna be good for taking the guys out on top. And, uh, we may actually have no choice but to, to maybe abandon her for now, actually. I just wanted to, like, show her off here, but this is actually, like, not good. Yeah, so you really have to try and use the correct character for the job, too, and Valkyrie's not exactly the best choice, but I just wanted to... I wanted to show her off anyway. Oh god, how did that not kill me? We can open this door by shooting at it enough times. Yeah, opening doors in this game is also very bizarre. If you want to know the plot of this game, because this game does actually have a plot, well, the plot of this game is absolutely mental. <laughs> so basically, this game takes place in the very far future, even though it does not look like that at all. It takes place in the year 2348, and it takes place in a time when mankind 
is at peace with the entire world, or the entire world is at peace with one another, you know? No no country is trying to wage war against one another, you know, we're, we're living in peace times. However, the government, because apparently there's a government that actually overlooks the Earth itself now in this universe, well, they're not exactly happy about that, because they feel like it's actually a good thing for humans to constantly wage war on one another. So what they do is that they decide to build a supercomputer that they decide to call the Game Ground Simulation, and basically humans can enter this simulation in order to fulfill their desire to kill other people. However, one day, something goes very wrong with the simulation, which causes it to malfunction, or the supercomputer starts malfunctioning, and it starts taking people hostage. And then what you have to do is that you have to go and rescue the people that are being taken hostage, because now there's real people that are at risk of being killed by the simulation, because it's going completely out of control. And that's about all I know regarding the game's plot. I'm not sure if at the end of the game you, you destroy the game ground simulation, or you just try to repair it so that people can continue, uh, waging virtual wars inside cyberspace? I don't freaking know, man, but the game's plot is just so freaking bizarre. Each individual world of this game is meant to simulate a different time period. The first world is supposed to simulate the Dark Ages, and then the second world can simulate the Middle Ages. Then I think the third world, it's, uh, China? Like, before the Communist Revolution? Or in other words, pre-revolutionary China. And then, the fourth world is the future, which I assume is like around 2348, the year that this game takes place in, supposedly. Also, that's like a very easy level. Yeah, it's kind of weird how that level is so much easier than the one we just, uh, we just got through. So yeah, the simulation is capable of simulating different time periods, basically. And what's interesting is that the Genesis version actually has levels that are exclusive to it. So in the Genesis version, there is an additional fifth world called uh, the present. So basically it takes place in present times, which I mean, in the case of this game, the Genesis version came out in 1991, so it would have been around that era. But present day involves you, you know, just moving through a city with like actual modern day soldiers. And I think at one point you even uh, venture inside an arcade, and it just gets weirder and weirder from that point onwards. And then I think, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that level in particular, or that world in particular, actually comes before the future world, because I think the future world is also in the Genesis port. The Master System port, on the other hand, also has an additional fifth world, but it's actually completely different from the one that they added in the Genesis version. In the Master System version, the additional level that they added, I believe is called the Final Era, or something like like that, so I guess it takes place even further out into the future than 2348? I, I'm don't, I don't quite know. I'm having like a really hard time concentrating because this, this dragon demon douchebag over here is like throwing fireballs at me, but I think what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna leave. Because I have the power to, so screw off. I don't know if that would be considered a cheese tactic or not, but I mean, the game allows you to do it. It's a feature, not a bug. But yes, the home ports of this game do have some additional features that aren't in the arcade version, which is really nice. You know, you get like additional content. It's not just like a like a one-to-one a -one port of the arcade version. You know, you got some brand new content and that's always welcome. I'm not sure if the PC Engine port has any additional content though. I think it's just like, uh, you know, porting all the arcade levels, but I don't think it does anything beyond that though, because I don't believe any of the additional worlds from the Master System or the Genesis ports are in that version of the game. I have heard though that the PC Engine version is a lot easier than the Genesis and Master System ports, and that's what I get for not paying attention. Yeah, but apparently the PC port is a lot, uh, is a lot easier, or the PC Engine port, I should say. The game was made a lot easier, the enemies are a lot easier to take out, a lot of the bosses were also made uh, a lot simpler as well. Yeah, and overall, the game is basically more fun to play. That's what I've heard, at least. Again, I'm only really familiar with the Genesis port. And actually, be before this, I actually tried playing the game uh, fairly extensively off screen before playing this, just to see if there was anything about it that I remembered. I mean, if there's if there's one thing that I've definitely noticed, I am a lot better at the game now than I was before. So there's there's definitely an improvement in my skills for absolute sure. And some levels I definitely remember seeing. Most of the World 2 levels I just don't remember in the slightest. And also a lot of the uh, warriors that I've encountered here, yeah, I don't really recognize them either. The only ones I really do remember from this game are Johnny, Betty, and Athra. 
that's pretty much it. I kind of vaguely recognize the Glow Knight, but yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I, this guy right here that we just picked up, by the way, I believe he's called the Professor. He can shoot left and right, and that's literally all he can do. Okay, and I already got him killed. Good. Yeah, he can he can literally only shoot left and right. Also, alternatively, we can try doing this. Yeah, there we go. You want to do some button mashing. Some good old button mashing right there. Yeah, so these, these like, dragon demon guys are just, are just demons. Yeah, I have to try and, like... I have to try and take these guys out first, because these guys are going to, like, constantly throw uh fireballs at us and it's just it's just very annoying yeah another problem here is that some characters also move a lot slower than others and yeah valkyrie is kind of uh yeah she's not exactly light on her feet because she's kind of like slow and it's not good <laughs> but i'm gonna try and take this guy out okay i forgot that <laughs> yeah, something else i forgot as well is that uh if you touch these guys you'll also die yeah, don't don't touch the dragon demons cuz they they'll 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 murder you too. I guess it's that like like that sword that they're holding. You know, you touch the sword and then you'll 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 end up succumbing to to severe injuries. But there we go. We got him anyway. So, this right here is the boss of the first world. This uh double-headed demon guy. Of course, I like wasn't paying attention again. God. Well, what's also kind of a problem is that this guy is a little slow on his feet. Okay, well, he's dead too. Great. God, Johnny, are you, like, any faster at all? Because this is actually kind of annoying. I have been able to beat this guy before, by the way. Thankfully, if you are playing on normal mode, you do actually get multiple continues. I think you get a total of three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so... At, what's at least good about Johnny in particular, though, is that because he can only fire directly upwards, it makes it a lot easier to, to aim at this guy. And there we go. Yeah, see, because both heads are trying to, like, like shoot at you all at the single time, but we're good. We're good. They're dead anyway, so we can move on. That's all fine and good. Actually, is, uh, oh god. I think Johnny and, Johnny and Betty are the only ones that I have left alive. Well, if I have to use a continue, I can actually still, uh, get Athra back. If I have to use a continue at all, then I can still get Athra back, so that's, that's fine. Yeah, see, these guys right here, because now we're in the Middle Ages, and these guys take two hits to kill because they're plated with armor. I do notice that there is another guy that we could potentially rescue, though. I don't know who that is exactly. I am gonna go and play hard mode later on after this, just so I can show you guys some of the, uh, some of the warriors that we haven't been able to find, because I'm dumb and I'm also not very good at this game. But the thing about playing game ground on hard mode, at least in the Genesis version, is that you can gain access to all 20 warriors from the very beginning of the game if you choose to play it on hard mode. Pay no attention to the fact that I just died off screen, but you didn't see it because, no, you didn't see it. There we go. That's how- that's how you properly do that. Okay, well now I have to make a choice here. Do I rescue Johnny or do I go for the new guy? Or alternatively, I could just use a continue right here and then just, you know, try and go for the- <laughs> for the guy down below. Hang on a second. I'm gonna try and- oh my god, please. Okay, well, I guess I am going for Johnny now. Okay, you know what? I'm actually gonna do this instead. Because I actually want to try and rescue this other guy right here, I'm gonna do this on purpose. Hang on a second. I can use a continue, and I actually get Athra back. Like I said, you get three continues in total if you're playing this on, on, uh, on normal difficulty. Pay attention to your time limit, though, because the time limit doesn't reset when you use a continue. Uh, oh god, wait, I forgot I was supposed to- <laughs> I forgot I'm not supposed to kill that guy because the level will end immediately. Okay, never mind. Whatever, let's just continue on for now. God, I am, like, actually an idiot. Yeah, this is- this is why I don't normally commentate games like this, because it requires so much concentration that you- you- you just can't commentate a game like this, that's the problem. But, I'd probably be able to do this with Athra, though. I have to try and, like, bait these guys to come over here, because they- they are definitely a lot smarter than they look. Sometimes they just, you know, charge into the fray, no questions asked, you know, kind- kind of blindly. But other times, they're not exactly smart. So hang on a second, I'm gonna- I'm gonna try and do this here. Okay, this is- this is fine. Yeah, see, these guys just charge at me with melee weapons. It's the guys on the side that are launching all of the arrows at me, and as long as they're not coming anywhere near me, then I think I'll be okay. Yeah, there we are. And then we can- we can charge the guys on the side. Yeah, so we can just, uh, you know, use normal arrows whenever we're using, you know, our normal weapon. Okay, so it seems like pressing either the A or the C button actually uses the special weapon, and then B button is just a normal one. I think that's how that works. Uh, yeah, that guy's gonna get replaced by another soldier, so we just take him out again. Let's just clear this side over here. There we go. 
gotta bait them to try and shoot in the wrong direction. That's what you gotta do. That's what you have to do. There we go. Very clean, pro, pro level gameplay right here. <laughs> Even though this entire video so far has been anything but. Yeah, see, we're now in the Middle Ages, so d the technology is becoming a bit more sophisticated in the game now, because these guys, I mean, these guys still have crossbows, but, you know, there's actual houses that you can see here now. I also think that these guys are actually too high up to even reach, unless I go around the side. Okay, well, I'm dead again. Okay, well, there's a little bit of a, yeah, there we go, a little bit of a, of a cheap death prevention measure right there, in which, uh, if I spawn into the, the level, and there's an enemy, like, right next to me, I can take advantage of my invincibility frames and just kill the enemy immediately by just running into him. So, that's, that's kind of nice at the very least. You know, it just prevents you from getting immediately hounded by enemies on the screen. Oh god, there we go, I have to, I have to do some, some juke maneuvers. Yeah, only problem here is that Betty can only throw her special weapon directly in front of her as well. She can only throw it directly upwards. That's another issue. Oh god, see, this is what I mean. Look at all these freaking projectiles that are coming towards me. I think this is my last, uh, my last continue, if I'm not mistaken. Here, I can try getting the guys on the top, like this? Oh god, that's still not reaching. Whoa, hello. Hello! Also can't really tell, like, what, like, which part of the, like, you can't tell the altitude of a lot of these, uh, of a lot of these projectiles a lot of the time as well. Like, are they in the air, or are they, like, close to the ground and coming straight for you? It's kind of difficult to tell at times. Good god, and I'm also, like, really not doing well. This is usually the level that I, that I end up dying on. I usually can't get through this unless I am playing on hard mode. Yeah, I think that's, that's it, isn't it? Actually, no, I have another continue. Holy crap. Okay, I thought it only gave me three. But yeah, these guys up on the, the, the roof right here, they're so hard to hit. Because my, my, my arrows almost never seem to reach them. Okay, well, there's the cheese right there. There's the cheese, at least. There's another guy that I could rescue here, though. That might be the Water Knight, but I can't tell for sure. And again, this guy can only shoot, like, directly in front of him, which is bull. God, you're just not useful in the slightest. Oh, lord, I don't know what... I don't know what anything is. Okay, well, I mean, Athra's still moving on, so that's good at least. Go. Let's see what he can do. I don't even remember what this level is all about. Round 2, Stage 4. Oh, it's the guys that just charge directly at me. Actually, no, I do have Betty back. Why did I get Betty back? I thought she literally just died, didn't she? Okay, well, in that case, I could try something here. Okay, yeah. So these guys will just, like, immediately charge towards you. Sometimes they get stuck within each other as well. Or they get stuck on each other. Like, they can't move out of the way. Okay, there we go. This is what I have to do right here. I have to, like, bait them. Gotta bait them. Oh god, wait, where is this guy going? There we go. That, that tombstone over there is, uh, is symbolism. Symbolism for what's about to happen to my to my poor precious soul. Okay, yes, yeah, so, so it seems like these guys will only like move directly downwards Like they don't change their position to try and like face me directly There we go, and then I think after that It's just these guys that fire the arrows and after that I believe that's actually the end of the level if I'm not mistaken So if I can just like survive here because I somehow didn't take out the other guy with that uh, what what I personally think was a very well-timed uh, grenade launch or a grenade throw because that's she throws it with her bare hands that's the thing you also need to take into account that a lot of the characters in this game also ha hold their weapons in different hands like betty's holding her pistol in her left hand and she's holding the grenades in her right hand so she shoots a little bit off center from her sprite which can be kind of jarring at times unless you're using the magic enemy is then you know the, the bullets that spawn out of them whenever you do fire bullets, they'll be slightly displaced from the center of their sprite. Only when you're using magic enemies is that not the case, because, you know, they're basically holding a crucifix in front of their damn face. You know, it's a lot easier to, to fire because of that and fire bullets and whatnot. Also, uh, I absolutely hate this level as well, because I did actually play this one off screen. We're gonna try to go into the medieval castle, but there's gonna be guys in the water that's gonna fire- that are gonna fire bullshit at us. They're gonna fire bullets of their own, and it's not gonna be fun in the slightest. Wait, can I get them to spawn here? I also don't know if I can hit them while they're in the water. Okay, yeah, see? Like that. Thankfully, the bullets on these guys don't have, uh, you know, abnormally long range, so that's- that's good, at least. But you have to still try and avoid them. Oh god, okay, he tried to, like, fake me out there. 
Okay, what are you doing, dude? Get out of here. Yeah, they're more like sea monsters, actually. They're not like actual soldiers or anything, I don't think. Also, the guys across the across the motor are not even firing at me. Are you right here? Okay, yeah. That's one hit, I think. Yeah, there we go. We killed him. Okay, so take this guy. I have no idea who this guy actually is. And then if we go over here, yeah, then we're gonna get bombarded by a bunch a bunch more enemies that are just gonna charge out at us. I think we can actually still rush this. Like, we can get through this as quick as possible and not get hit by any of the arrows. I believe that's still possible to do. But I, I'm gonna try it here. There's just one more guy. There we go. Okay, we're gonna actually try this. I gotta, I gotta back up for a minute. And then I'm gonna try and see if, yeah, we can just... <laughs> if we're fast enough, we can just rush through it. And you know what? I think that's what I'm gonna do instead. Actually, wait a minute. What I'm gonna do instead is answer my phone. Okay, sorry about that. I have no idea who that was. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, there we go. Just rush through that. Very nice indeed. Might as well just ignore the guys on top, because I don't even know how I'd be able to reach all the guys, like, on the very far left and far right. Okay, so we're inside the castle. There's an exit right there, and we actually have a lot more people here. Okay, so this is the Water Knight, and this person's name is Ma'am, I think. Ma'am also has a boomerang. I actually don't know what separates her from Valkyrie, though, because, yeah, she can use a boomerang too, but, like, what's the difference between her and Valkyrie? I have no clue. We do have some new enemy types here, though. We have knights in the background. These guys will charge at us if we get close to them. Oh, jeez. Okay, I didn't like where that arrow was going at all. Uh, go the other way. Okay, hang on a second. We're gonna- we're gonna try this. Oh god, it almost reaches the knights. Okay, you know what? How about I just- okay, well, I don't know what those hitboxes are, but alright. Fine then, we're gonna try the water knight. Now, the water knight is pretty cool, though, because basically you can summon whirlpools that will- yeah, they will basically stun the enemies momentarily. Yeah, they still spin around even when it disappears. Also, it, it helps that she's a magic user. So, yeah, just get out of there so we can at least advance to the next round. But I think in the meantime... I mean, these knights are not gonna come towards us unless we get, like, really, really close to them. So, I think I'm gonna kill that guy. And then, I mean, this guy right over here is gonna charge at us anyway as soon as he notices us going for the exit. So kill him. Maybe kill that guy over there. And then we could just leave. But the only issue with us leaving is that there's also a bunch of, like, other other warriors that we could rescue. So, I mean, unless we have enough time... Yeah, these guys take, take more than one hit to kill. I think they take... Oh god, do they take four? Uh, well, I mean, in it, alternatively, I could try this as well. I mean, I could try going and rescuing at least one of them. Yeah, but do they- do they not attack from the side? Okay, that guy can actually fire across walls, or, or- or like he can fire above walls, I mean. That's what I meant to say. There we go. Nice. I mean, we can try going for this. Oh god. Hang on a second. And try and rescue one of them? Here we go. Maybe try a rescue mission here. I mean, you can kind of just button mash to kill these guys as well. That's another thing you could do. Yeah. And then, you know, you could fire arrows over the walls, because, I mean, Athra is capable of doing that as well. See, the only problem with this, though, is that... Did I seriously just forget that that would end the level? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're not gonna rescue anyone then. Well, I mean, see, the only issue with that is that... That guy was blocking off all the other characters, so I would've- I wouldn't have had a choice. I wouldn't have been able to get back there anyway, because that was the only guy I left there. Yeah, I think you know what- you know what I think would have been a smarter decision? Maybe try to get rid of- some of the knights, but considering they only move in, like, one direction, which I think is up and down, yeah, it might have been- it might have been smarter to just maybe get rid of some of the knights first. I don't know. Also, the magic attacks from the water knight actually- yeah, they take the knights out in just two hits of damage. Okay, so then there's these wizards right here. I believe that's what they are. Yeah, these guys are very unpredictable because they just kind of- they kind of teleport all over the place. I, I actually killed one of them there. Also, the guys on the side, they'll try to charge at you as well. Yeah, these wizards are, are kind of annoying because they, they teleport everywhere and you can't exactly tell where they're going to teleport to next. There we go. I actually managed to kill them, so I got, I got kind of lucky with that. Here, kill this guy first. Yeah, and then this guy, I mean, you can only take- you- you get taken out in just two hits. These guys that just charge at me- okay, you're fine. You're fine. Should I? No. I'm gonna leave you alone because I want to try and do this. Hang on a second. Okay, that didn't uh, stop you. Hang on a second. Take this. And am I gonna be able to- Oh no, you're blocking me off, actually. Actually, wait, if you go back down, 
Are you gonna go back down? Okay, never mind. I guess you're not gonna go back down, and I still got killed anyway. And yeah, I also forgot that if I do end up uh, killing the- What even- what even is this? It looks like he's running into the wall. Okay, sir, please go away, god. Yeah, see, and- and not only that, but... If the warrior that was just killed, he ends up going down, then he gets replaced with the warrior that was on the screen, so... Whoever I was trying to rescue there, he just ended up getting replaced with the Water Knight. This game is frustrating, okay? I'm not gonna lie, this game can be incredibly frustrating at times, especially when things like this are happening. Wait, wizards please. Wizards of Waverly Place. Oh god. Okay, I actually took one of them out. I actually have never seen this level before, by the way, because I've never managed to make it this far into the game. I'm actually surprised that I'm still alive right now. Okay, well, that guy just spawned directly in front of me, so that's bull. I'm not taking that for an answer. No, absolutely not. I don't- I don't respect that decision in the slightest. Thankfully, these fireballs are not, like, infinite range. That's good, at least. I have no idea what these- what those amoeba-like enemies are in the- in the background over there. Did I manage to kill at least one of them? Okay, you spawned in front of me, but you're still dead, so, I mean, this is good. That's good, okay. Oh my god, there's four of them! Are you serious? Why is there four of them? Here. It'd probably be easier to just do this, wherever, wherever you spawn. But you can't tell where they're gonna spawn, though. They don't give you an indication as to where they're gonna go. Here, where are you at? You go over there. Okay, well, they kind of spawn when I get into the middle. Okay, the amoebas. Yeah, the amoebas are, are really fast. How many hits do you take? More than two. Okay, more than two. Three. I see. <laughs> oh, and you can actually move through walls. That's not good. No, it's not good if you can move through walls. Why can I not hit the wizard down below over here? Do you just constantly spawn here? Apparently you do. Here, what about... Yeah, see? And because he holds it in his right hand, I actually can't hit this guy from the right side, can I? No, not when I'm up against this wall right here. That doesn't work. So what the hell do I do? Well, I kind of still... Kind of still hit him there. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, I'm gonna rush it. Oh, I got through it, actually. Holy crap. Yeah, I was not gonna deal with any of that garbage today. I was not willing to. Holy crap, I've never made it this far into the game before. This is probably gonna be the one that I end up dying on, but... Oh, we actually have another guy that we rescued right here. Okay, so this guy's name is Ku. He has... an assault rifle. What the hell is this? Yeah, he has an assault rifle, and yeah, he fires a lot of bullets. He's also very slow, which is not a good thing. Oh god, wizards. Okay, got one of them. Yeah. I don't know if these are, like, conveyor belts or something. What is this place? Good god. Well, this is the Middle Ages. They didn't have conveyor belts in the Middle Ages. Yeah, so that that's basically cool, guys. He only fires in, uh... Can he fire? No, he fires in all directions. It's just that, yeah, he has, like, low, low-lying bullets. Okay, no, you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna do that to me, buddy. No way. No way. Piss right off, please, with your stupid little fireballs. Okay, where are you? Oh my god. Please. Oh, okay, so the bullets actually travel over their heads of the amoebas. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> that's actually not good. So, I mean, if it, if, it, if it goes over their heads, then how am I gonna hit them? Probably this? No? Oh, wait, no, because I can only hit them when they actually, like, grow. When they grow outwards. Okay, that, I guess that makes sense. Hang on a second. This is actually not that bad, except there's another wizard over there. That's the only thing that is bad about this situation. Okay, I'm gonna try and take these guys out one at a time. There we go. Yeah, they don't even, like, have- have- your fireballs don't even have that good range. What are you even doing with your life? Okay, wow. I'm actually surprised. I'm genuinely surprised. Okay, get him through, at least. I don't know if I'm even gonna try and go for the other guy over there. I'm not sure what the cracks in the floor mean. I don't know if that means I'm gonna, like, fall through them or not. I don't know if I want to kill the wizard, though. I don't think I want to. I think I want to actually, like, keep the wizard alive and then just try to avoid him as much as I can. And then... or not, because I'm gonna kill the guy and then somehow he's going to still kill me right after I kill him, which makes zero sense, but... Okay. Well, here's the final boss of round two. Can I kill him with just coup? It's a giant samurai. I think I'm dead, basically. Oh god, the wizards! Okay, well... <laughs> Oh wait, I have another continue, actually. Holy crap, okay. Why do I have more continues? I thought I only got three. This is like my fifth continue so far. What is going on? I should not be given this many chances at redemption. No, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this many chances. Hey, what are you? 
Okay, you just start charging towards us. You have a lightning sword? Oh, that's kind of cool. But <laughs> I, I'm not familiar with this boss at all. Crap. I should have moved. I should have just moved away from that. Oh god. Yeah, these damn wizards are gonna make everything so much more annoying. Okay, I don't really know what, what to even do here anymore at this point, because look at all the arrows that are being launched towards me over there. Is that like the only attack you even have, that little lightning sword attack? I'm not even sure. Either way, that's kind of cool, but also kind of weird. Unless you have another kind of attack that I, that you, that you show off when you have like very little health or basically no health. Oh my god, see, this is the issue because Betty's so much slower. I mean, I can try to avoid these guys as much as I can and just riddle him with like, with, with the grenades. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I mean, in all honesty, I kind of like to just stop playing right now because I've shown off basically everything that I've wanted to show except for some of the other characters. I'm honestly surprised I even managed to make it this far anyway. I'm genuinely amazed by this. Okay, hang on a second. Yeah, you, you get some hits in there. There's also no way of telling, like, if you're, if you're, like, at what health he's currently at. That's the other thing. Okay, I don't know how that hit me. I'm pretty sure I wasn't standing anywhere close to that. All right, well, game over, out of rank. I don't know what out of rank means, but I think that means I'm just out of soldiers. Pretty sure that's what that means. Yeah, these are all my attempts, I think. One, three, and seven. Yeah, and then after that, the game just resets. There's no way to get back to any of the levels that you just, uh, completed. I don't believe there is, anyway. Alright, well, that was, uh, still pretty good, though, because I managed to make it a lot further into the game than I thought I would. That's basically about 40% of the game that I just showed off to you guys, because there's 50 levels in this version. I showed off 20 levels, which was a lot more than I thought I would be able to show off today. So, I guess before I end this video, I'm gonna show you guys some of the other characters that you can use here. And I am gonna go to hard mode to show this off. So, who did I already show off here? I showed off Athra and Ma'am, and Valkyrie, and Betty. I showed off Ku. I did show off the Professor, though, because like I said, the Professor can only shoot to his side. So he's not really all that interesting. Then we got Johnny, we got the Glow Knight, we have the Water Knight. Yeah, then we had Verbal. Okay, so let's show off this guy then. So I believe this guy's name is Gascon. And this guy's gimmick is that he's another spear thrower, so he doesn't really have that much of a unique gimmick to him, honestly. He's basically like a faster version of Athra. I, I, I believe that's that's a very good way of, of describing how, how Gascon controls. Yeah, much faster Athra. Uh, only problem, though, is that he can only fire in one direction. He can't fire in multiple directions like uh, Athra can. That's the only downside to him. So in that case, we could also show off Mars. Indeed, Roman God himself. Uh, he has much faster arrows, and I believe they also fly a lot further than most of the spear-throwing characters. That is kind of an issue, though, because sometimes, again, kind of the same problem that Verbal has, oftentimes, it'll just fly over the enemy's heads, because it actually travels too far in some cases. So, I mean, I definitely like the fact that he has really fast arrows that he can fire, but, I don't know, not exactly the, the best character to use. And again, he can only fire his special arrows in one direction, so that is another issue. Another issue that you're gonna have to face. Wow, okay, I couldn't even fire at all because of that stupid rock. There we go. Get out of here, please. Honestly, when I'm playing in hard mode, the game doesn't really feel that much more difficult than it is in normal. It feels like you have the same difficulty, but just with more characters at your disposal. And whenever any of the characters fall in battle, you can still retrieve them, so... Yeah, 20 lives, but one difference here is that you don't have any continues, though. So if you lose all your characters, then you're done. If you're playing on hard mode. So then we can show off the Fire Knight right here. I think this is, like, the only other magic user in the game. Actually, no, that's not true. That's not true. There is another magic user, but yeah, he has fire. Uh, he can also shoot out fireballs. This guy wields like a scythe, though. He doesn't wield a crucifix like the, uh, the Glow Knight does. So, these guys can run right into the fire and they, they die instantly, yeah. So, the only problem with this is that the fire does not reach all the way. Yeah, the fire does not reach all the way up to that cliffside over there. Another problem as well is that you can only shoot fire as long as, uh, yeah, there's not more than three flames on the screen. Otherwise, yeah, you won't be able to fire more un until they despawn. We can do this in the meantime, though. Yeah, well, there is one difficulty difference right here, because these guys right there, yeah, they're a lot faster. They're a lot faster now. They charge at you way quicker than they do in normal mode. This guy right here is kind of cool, so his name is Zaymon. He's another magic user, and basically what this guy's gimmick is, this guy's whole shtick, is that he can fire tornadoes. 
but the tornadoes have a very weird property to them because they basically function like pinballs. Yeah, so they ricochet off of everything in the environment, including walls, which results in weird things like that occurring. I think we can actually hit the guys on top, though, if it stops like- oh my god. If it stops like, uh, frigging- or, or actually, can- can it hit? Oh no, I don't think it can. Okay, never mind, I don't think it can actually hit the guys all the way up on top, so in that case, I'll just- I'll kill them normally. I wanna- I wanna show off Zaymon in the next- in the next stage, perhaps. I think the next stage will give us, a uh, you know, a good- a good battlefield, a good playing field to test that out on. So just wait a minute. Here we go, this is a good playing field, actually. Okay, so where- where is he at? Alright, let the tornadoes fly. Also, I have to kind of, like, like, you know, try and keep myself alive as well, but yeah, they're gonna- they're gonna, like, bounce off of things- well, you know, under normal circumstances, I could just use save states, but... Oh my god. I- you know what. Here, maybe it's better to just show this on stage one, where there's not, like, 50 million enemies, like, trying to ream my asshole all at a single time. Go! Go, my little tornado friend! Yeah, see, and, and it doesn't stay on the screen for too long, though. It does despawn after a while. Admittedly, he's not, like, the, the easiest character to use, but... Yeah, you'll see that it bounces off of enemies, and you can use this to your advantage to try and take out multiple enemies. Wow, I still get killed, are you- Screw it, we're gonna go on to the next character here. Uh, this guy is called Kid. He also can only fire to his sides, but the difference here is that he uses a machine gun to do it. Literally the only difference between him and Ku. Or, or sorry, not Ku, the professor. Also, he wears a bucket hat that reads Born to Kill, if that means anything to you, which it probably doesn't. This guy right here is called Mud Puppy. He's got a- what looks like a flamethrower, kinda acts like a rocket launcher. Yeah, he's also slow as molasses too, but he also has a pistol as backup. Yeah, he can only fire this directly in front of himself as well. He's not very good to take out in the- with, like what the arrow launching guy is. He's really not, like, good for this task at all. Also, he holds it in his left hand, which again, makes it very difficult to actually hit things. Anyway, he just died actually, so let's ch let's uh, show off the general. So the general does actually use a flamethrower, an honest to god flamethrower. Okay, he already got killed too. Okay, fine then. Well, I mean, it's just a stupid flamethrower, so you know what? Let's show off Lobby then in that case. So, this other character called Lobby, he also uses a rocket launcher, except his rockets, yes, they do fly above most platforms. They can actually hit targets that are way high up. There we go. Doesn't- doesn't obey rocks whatsoever. There we are. Just blow everyone to smithereens. They'll just fly over rocks, so they- they fly over solid objects, which is good. This person's name is Honey, and I believe Honey is basically- oh my god. This person's name right here is Honey. Also, if you're wondering why I keep restarting and going back to the first level, it's because I keep getting killed as soon as I want to try and show off these, uh, these other characters. So I'm just going back to round one just to make it easier on myself. The difference between Honey and Betty is that Honey can actually throw her grenades in all directions. Again, that's the only real difference between her and Betty, though. Other than that, she's not that unique of a character. And then we have this guy called Cyber. He fires low-lying rockets, but they split apart into six separate rockets that fly in all directions, so you can kill enemies very quickly, you know, if you, if you use it correctly, that is. Only problem is that he can only fire crap in front of himself. And he's also slow as molasses, which also makes him very prone to getting hit by arrows. And actually, I believe that's everyone. I think I've actually showed off all 20 characters in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so with all that done, I think I am actually just going to leave the video here now, because, yeah, that's everything I wanted to show. All the different characters that you can use, in all honesty, some characters are more unique than others. Because some characters are just basically more overpowered versions of characters that you start with from the beginning. You know, you have a lot of spear throwers. I mean, the magic users are definitely unique, because some of them fire whirlpools, others can use magic, some use glowing orbs as like a shield, I think. And then of course you have Zaymon who fires tornadoes, ba basically pinball tornadoes as I like to call them. You know, when used in the right situations, the pinball tornadoes can be very fun to use. They're a little bit wonky though. But yeah, that's kind of what I like about this game, it's just getting all of these characters, and then just using the character that you think is correct for the job. 
And yeah, some of them are definitely a lot easier to use than others, because some are just incredibly slow, which doesn't make it very great for dodging projectiles. So you really have to figure out the correct character for the job, because not all of them are really fit to take on some of these levels, if I'm being honest. You know, some of the more heavyweight characters, the ones that use the heavier weapons, they'd probably be very good against bosses. But in the normal levels, you'd probably want to use someone that's maybe a little bit more agile. Also doesn't help the fact that some characters use weapons in their left hand and others in their right hand either, so then the bullets are firing off-center unless you're using the magic users, in which case it comes out of the weapon that they're holding directly in front of their face. And then of course all their projectiles have different ranges and whatnot, some of them can hit low-lying enemies, some can only hit high-lying enemies, like the spear throwers, some can only fire their special weapons directly in front of them, which is like upwards, which complicates things even further. So the, the whole point I'm trying to make here is that this game is very brutal, but it's still a pretty fun game either way, and it still has has really good music because I really freaking like the World 1 theme, man. Gain Ground was actually remade for the PlayStation 2 in 2004, and with that, a lot of the music was redone and it sounds very epic. Like, the 2004 remake of Gain Ground, a lot of the music in that game sounds, like, extremely cool. The graphics are admittedly a bit of a downgrade from the arcade version because the arcade version definitely looks a lot better than this, you know, running on the Sega System 24, allowed for some pretty high-fidelity graphics, at least for the time. But most of the levels are still there, and I mean a bonus here with the Genesis port is that there's brand new levels here, including one where you're literally killing soldiers in a city and then going to an arcade and, like, killing, like, gang members or something. I think that's what they are. I'm only basing that on screenshots that I remember seeing a while back. But yeah, the game definitely gets really weird, and like I said, the entire plot of this game is extremely bizarre because it's technically taking place in cyberspace, where a bunch of people have been kidnapped and held hostage. Yeah, which, by the way, the citizens that are being kidnapped and held hostage, they're actually the warriors that you encounter later on, the ones that you can rescue and you can then play as. They're the ones being held captive. So I guess the question really is, why don't they just fight back? I mean, they they clearly, they even have all their weapons. It's like, it, it doesn't make freaking sense. Ah, 80s. Nothing made sense in the 80s. Video game plots certainly didn't. But either way, guys, Game Ground, still a really cool game. Definitely unique, even today. Like, unique for its time and still kind of remains unique because... Nothing similar to Gain Ground has really ever been made since then. So it's cool, it definitely plays like Gauntlet, and it definitely has Gauntlet inspirations, but then when you look past that, it still manages to retain its own uniqueness. It's a really interesting blend of genres, and I mean, it, it really is hard to attach a label to this, because it's like a variety, it, it incorporates a variety of different gameplay styles. You know, I've seen some people call it a, a top-down action game or a strategy game, and uh, all of those labels are technically correct, but they're also technically not. It's kind of its own unique thing, honestly, aside from the Gauntlet inspirations. So if you still want to check the game out, though, the link is in the description if you want to purchase the game through Steam, but it's also available on Sega Genesis Classics for PlayStation 2 and PSP. That would be the Genesis version. And of course, it's also available on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection for PS3 and Xbox 360, and the Sega Genesis Classics compilation for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. It's not available on the Genesis Mini, though. Game Ground was one of the games that M2 did not bother adding to the Genesis Mini for one reason or another, so you won't be able to find it on, like, any version of that clone console. So, if you want to get Game Ground, well look for it elsewhere, not on the Genesis Mini, because unfortunately it's not available on any version of that system. But anyway, I'm gonna leave things here for now. Gain Ground is still a very unique strategy action game. I'm not really even sure what it is. It also has like run and gun elements too, but I don't know. It's, it's its own unique thing, basically. And I do personally think that it's very underappreciated, because it never received a sequel of any kind, too. And personally, I think that's a bit of a travesty, because I actually really like this game. I mean, I heard that the remake was pretty good, though, like the PS2 remake, but it was only released in Japan, that's the only problem. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is just go play Gain Ground, like, wh whichever way that you can get your hands on it, whether it is the Master System version, or the Genesis port, or the PlayStation 2 remake, just play Gain Ground, for goodness sakes. Yes, it's brutal as all hell, but honestly, the brutality is worth it in the end. Anyway, thank you guys for watching as always. I'll see you in the next video I make. Later!